I don't know, guys. Loyal looks nothing like the books, okay? All right, hey, welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce. Thank you so much for stopping by. I would love it if you liked and subscribed to this channel. So I wanted to review episode five. Episode five of The Wheel of Time, the TV show on Amazon. And uh, just give some of my thoughts, some of my initial impressions here. I, uh, just a lot of things going on. I have to say right off the bat that this was probably my least favorite episode so far. Um, there is just so much going on. I, <laughs> at the same time, least favorite doesn't mean that I didn't like it. I thought it was very good. This one, it maybe just gave me, and I think this is more of a personal issue, too much anxiety as to what still <laughs> needs to be set up what is even going on um it's just hard to see it right now when you're like so many things are changed from the book how are they gonna get i mean it is <laughs> i can't even it's so much so uh you know first off this is no spoilers up to uh this point at first and then i'll get into kind of spoilers on the on the actual episode but just you know from the the first bit the um uh, you know, I'll go kind of characters by characters. I, you know, we start out with with the the Aes Sedai. They just had this battle with the Dragon Reborns people, and so we lost some some Aes Sedai. Some, and especially we get to see the Warder Bond and how important that is, and and how much of a struggle that was for uh, a Warder to. Uh, lose his eyes to die and you go and then there's even you know a lot of commentary in this episode about hey land you can tell me to go bond to some other eyes to die when you lose moraine and it's like hmm any foreshadowing at all going on here <laughs> uh, hmm uh, so but i i think overall this this episode it kind of serves to set things up it's very much uh we've got it we it just there's so much it just reminds me of like how much world building there is you know at one point i was like oh, was that a novice oh my gosh like i'm excited over a novice um in the white tower but i mean seeing we got to see the white tower we got to see everybody kind of converging on tarvalon and uh and and that was really exciting that's extremely exciting um, maybe the most exciting is we got to see Loyal, Loyal, um, Loyal, and I, I do, you know, I kind of made reference about that at the beginning of this video, <laughs> but, you know, I, I have to say my head canon does kind of align a little more with, with this, even though it's, this still isn't even, I, I picture much bigger still than, than even this, but the, the, the pointy, hairy ears, I definitely, uh, was seeing it, so I think, Seeing Loyal here was first kind of, okay, get out of your head, Canon. It's okay. Uh, uh, but also, but then seeing Loyal and, and it was like, actually, it's really cool. He kind of looks, I don't know, he has some kind of nature -y, wooden tree kind of atmosphere that he's making, that they made of him. And, and I think it's good. I mean, that, that serves, I mean, that tells a whole lot about the Ogier. Um, I do have to say, uh, the way, I mean, first of all, <laughs> so anyway, first of all, I think the way the characters kind of treat him in this episode is great because that's exactly, I mean, he just talks and talks and everybody's so much hastier and he's still way over here where you've already gone past that. So I love, I think they're spot on doing the character 100% justice. They're doing a great job with that. Um, one of the things, though, I just thought was just a little odd was it was kind of like, you know, this Two Rivers kid uh, hasn't ever seen an Ogier before uh, in his whole life, and it's kind of like, oh, Ogier, Ogier, oh, wow, okay. Um, all right, there's some things outside, <laughs> bye. <laughs> like, he, I don't know, it was just, and I think that goes to kind of the nature of the show right now is it, it is trying to quickly pace everything which the books really they're not extremely quick paced <laughs> they're they're slower they're so i think that might be the biggest kind of jarring factor is is the show really just trying to kind of fit everything in go quickly i mean even at one point in the episode Rand goes well it's been a month since i've seen a well i mean it doesn't feel like it in the episodes it feels like boom 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 we're already here i already made it to tarvalon 
it just it, it quickly got there and you're going it's been a month how does it it hasn't really shown that um, unless I miss something um, but it just didn't feel like it's been that month since they were separated at Shadar Logoth. So, uh, but again, I think they're doing a good job. Uh, I guess let's get into a little bit of spoiler talk for uh, the rest of the episode so I can, uh, and really just for the episode, not for, for I'm not going to go into crazy like spoilers for the rest of the series or anything through the books. And let's be honest, I, I don't know if I have confidence enough to say that we're even <laughs> going to be following those. We'll see. But... Uh, So anyway, getting on with that. So the biggest thing I think for me was kind of like, you know, what happened to Camelin? What happened? It was mentioned, at least in the episode, where, I mean, there were so many things uh, there that, you know, happened. Because, you know, I mean, Camelin's on the way to Tarvalon. It just, anyway, it it does, it just feels like, you know, what's going on? It's still, it's been highly entertaining, very good. Just, you know, this episode was a bit slow with all the, you know, the the mourning the warders, and again, I'm not saying it was a bad thing, Um, especially, you know, I I think it was so powerful at the very end there when uh, Lan is just so upset and emotional over this, and I think it's great showing how he's this kind of stoic, you know, emotionless, you know, very untalkative, kind of stone-cold guy, and and then um, he, and then he's here, just completely letting all of his emotions out. And I think that just shows what a powerful character Lan is. In that, um, and I think it's it's really doing a good job of characterizing him right now. Um, so, uh, but it it was great to see Tarvalon. It's good to see. I mean, I, I, this is an interesting take on Matt, uh, kind of being suspected of having the one power, um, and and so. Uh, where in the book it's, uh, you know, we don't know quite what is going on, but it it just didn't, I mean, again, I might be rusty here, but I don't quite remember Matt being suspected of having the one power, but it's an interesting take. I I think it's really, I like it a lot, um, to be honest, uh, just because he is, he's showing the signs of what they've already been establishing so far. I think I think it was interesting um, to see, and again, uh, just a little things just kind of shifted around a little bit here. But but having um, having Loghain kind of paraded through the city, seeing Padden Thane there, kind of you know his shiftiness <laughs> kind of disappearing there. Uh, you know, you kind of briefly see him, and he does kind of the same thing that he does when the Trollocs uh, are there at the two rivers, just kind of. Like you know, I'm I'm paying attention here and then disappearing. So that's I think that's really interesting. Um, definitely a golem type. Uh, maybe that's too much. Um, I I like the episode. I think um, it just it's it's definitely messing with a lot of uh, you know the the book timeline right now. And so but but the the magic and everything, the one power use, the channeling. Um, switching gears to uh, uh, Perrin and Egwene, um, because we know she's been kind of using the one power. She kind of gets that she can do it and um, has kind of practiced a little bit with it. So we knew she was lying to Valda, even Valda of the White Cloaks, um, when she's tied up. But I thought, uh, interesting take this this one on... um, you know, again, I think you just, you got to kind of realize that the TV show can handle these things in so many ways, and I thought this was an interesting take, kind of this, um, I don't know, in the world right now we live in with the obsession with some of these kind of uh, 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 torture kind of movies, it kind of made sense to me. Uh, again, that kind of terrible decision to have to make, you know, your life or, or someone else's, and um, but I, again, you, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's <laughs> being a book reader or just kind of like, they can't kill off. These are guys, these are main characters. They can't have set up Perrin literally killing his wife and now admitting it and, uh, and then just like get rid of him. So, you know, you knew he wasn't going and then you knew Egwene, she's been set up for way too many things, especially with, uh, um, Nynaeve's, um, and maybe that, yeah, that happened after. So it, with Nynaeve kind of providing her, like, you know, look at what Egwene's been through, and she's going to get through this. 
Um, and how powerful was that conversation too with Rand, Rand and Nynaeve meeting up again and, and really having that you know concern over Nynaeve or uh, uh, Egwene and, and then Nynaeve really like going, she's fine, she's got this. Um, and then we see that she's got this and it was great. And it, I mean, uh, it was terrible, but great. And so I really think um, they did a good job with, with, with that. Um, and and kind of even like an inciting incident to get to Perrin. I mean, he's got those golden eyes, and he's all the wolves are coming and attacking, and and to to still set up the same thing that the book set up. Uh, which um, anyway, I don't want to get into any spoilers there. I keep trying to. I almost did. <laughs> so, uh, but that was really powerful and really uh, good to just see Valde get some come up and because man oh he does that actor is so good and i don't even know his name he's so good so i uh i'm still quite enjoying the series loving that it's the number one streamed show uh on amazon for the year um maybe for the whole for anything i don't know probably not because they're squid game uh, but um i can only hope uh but at least on amazon because they didn't have squid game um but other than that, I, I cannot wait for next week. It just, this one set up a lot of things, had a lot of good uh, convergence, and um, which is always fun to kind of everybody separating, everybody converging again. Um, seeing the White Tower was just so fun and excellent, and um, I just, it, so well done, I think. Um, <laughs> I saw someone pointing out, like, you know who could be who could be the dragon reborn and it's got we've got like you know matt's issues with uh the power or well, with the, the the knife or whatever's going on or maybe having the power we've got um perrin and his eyes and the wolf kind of thing we've got Egwene who can clearly channel we've got Nynaeve so we've getting four we've got Nynaeve who's the most powerful channeler that anyone's seen clearly at least in that one room in the cave uh, and then Rand saw a mountain. I think that was redeemed. <laughs> that was such good. I was trying to. <laughs> uh, so I was like, he recognized a mountain. All right. Um, but again, uh, him getting pointed out as an Aiel by Loyal Loyal, who's who I I I had him as Loyal in my in my head, and I've I've since looked it up in the glossary, and I was wrong, uh, which is not the first time. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, with my malazan malazan issues uh, <laughs> so uh, but I thought that was very interesting because um, we don't I mean in the show world we don't know the Aiel at all I don't even think they've been mentioned yet uh, this is getting really to be a struggle with my head canon in the books and then uh, the show how <laughs> much has been mentioned probably everything I don't know but it did uh, but Loyal mentioning the Aiel and Rand kind of having no idea what is even, no way, what, what are you talking about? I'm from the two, two rivers, I'm, you know, that's not even the case. I, it, really interesting. So that's good that we're already at least setting it up. Maybe Rand will go kind of look up what the heck Aiel are. Maybe that's what he started doing with the core, anyway, the, the dragon cycle, is it the Corleone cycle? Maybe it's, sorry, I'm blanking, um, but I'll, I'll put it up. The, the, prophecy of the dragon <laughs> i i this is not my favorite episode and i haven't really been giving these ratings just i just don't feel like i can i can do that for books i've been i'm <laughs> confident in my ability on my abilities with the books but with tv shows you know i'm just either a fan or i'm not i don't know there's i can tell you what i like and what i don't like about things and uh but but overall still great still cannot wait for next week and let's keep them coming all right hey what are your thoughts on this this episode please let me know please like and subscribe if you haven't already appreciate everything you're doing have a great weekend bye